Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about GDB, which is the kind of low level C debugger, uh, and how you can use it to get a stack trace from C Python in the case you have like a stuck process or some other broken situation. Um, I did another video on GDB and C Python uh, previously. I will link that in the description, uh, but I missed this very important debugging tool uh, and I'll show you how I used it recently to debug a deadlock in a bit of code. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into that. So first I want to demo the deadlock. Uh, it's a poor interaction between a sig term handler and multiprocessing pool. Um, I was demoing the test suite of one of my projects on stream and everything deadlocked and I was <laughs> kind of confused. Um, but I'll show you what we eventually found there. So we're going to set up a virtual environment and it happened to be caused by coverage, so we're going to be using coverage here, and we're going to make a small little Python script here. Name equals main, raise system exit main, and the code involved multiprocessing, and we narrowed it down to just a big old loop and range, big number, uh, where it just made a multiprocessing pool. That was all that was needed to cause this. Multiprocessing.pool, give it a size of two, um, and let that pool immediately tear down. I'm also gonna print some dots so that we uh, see how this goes, um, just so that we can see it execute at the same time. And so normally if you run this just by itself, it's just gonna print a bunch of dots and then eventually exit. This doesn't trigger the deadlock because uh, we didn't run this with coverage, and you know, you'll have to trust me on it, but it's going to print these dots for a very, very long time. And eventually, uh, if I control C, it'll stop. But if we run that with coverage, uh, let me actually do it over here, because we're going to be using the left side screen to do the smart debugging. Coverage run dash M T. And so this is going to run under coverage. And you'll see that eventually it stops. And this is where it is actually deadlocked here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I poked at this process and then eventually used GDB to figure out where it was stuck. Um, so if we do PS, EF, and grep for coverage, should see a process here. There's actually a couple processes here. Uh, and one of these is caused by our multiprocessing pool. And we'll use PS tree, which I've used in another video that you can search my YouTube playlist to find. You can see there are two processes here. Um, and if we S trace these, we can kind of see what they're doing sudo s trace dash p this i don't know if i need sudo here let's try it without sudo sometimes you can trace your own processes sometimes you can't yeah in this case i couldn't so we need to do sudo uh you'll see that this is calling wait for i happen to know that wait for is waiting on a process id and this 24158 actually exactly matches what this process id down here is doing um, so let's see what this process is doing. Uh, so if we do sudo s trace dash p that other process, you'll see that this is waiting on a few texts waiting on a lock. So there's some sort of some sort of lock that it's waiting for it to finish. Um, and so that's that's our deadlock. But we don't know what Python code is causing this or like why why it's stuck. And so we're going to investigate this a little bit further using GDB. Now with GDB, you can attach to a running process and debug it. So if we were to run GDB, uh, you need to know the executable that you're running. In this case, it's VM bin Python. Uh, and we're gonna pass the PID that we're gonna debug. I don't remember which is the useful one. I think it's the parent process is the useful one to debug. Um, and you'll see that we actually get an error, could not attach to process. And that's the same problem that we had with strace. So we need to do this with sudo. Uh, it'll load up all of the symbols for all of the linked libraries. Uh, you can page through this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that got loaded into this process. And now we can kind of start poking around. We can get a backtrace uh, and see where we are in the, in the function code. Uh, but this might not be super useful. Like, I don't know what Python frame this PyEval is doing. So it's not super useful. Uh, and this is kind of what I showed you up until up, up in the... Uh, in the last video. But we're gonna go a step further and show the Python backtrace. Uh, now I actually have to quit out of this because um, I don't have everything set up properly because I wanted to demo how you would set the things up to get the Python backtrace. And the first thing that you're gonna need is the Python GDB plugin. Now this automatically gets installed if you have installed the debug build of Python for your, um, for whatever Python version you're using. So Python 3.8-DBG. 
This will install uh, the GDB plugin for the debug build of Python. And you actually don't need the debug build to use the GDB plugin. It's like, this is not running using debug Python. It's just stock. Um, and if we dpackage l uh, Python 3.8 dbg, you'll see that there's this GDB auto load plugin. And this is kind of the, the special thing that's gonna get automatically loaded when we run GDB and give us some special commands that help us poke around even further in that in that code there so let's go back into gdb again uh gdb and you'll see somewhere in here it says i don't know where it is somewhere in here it says it auto loaded the python extension because we asked for it here um, and now we can use some other commands that are magically available because we have that plugin loaded to get further information so we can do pi bt and this will give us the python stack trace now it's inverted, so it's not quite how you would expect to see it from a normal stack trace. Normally you expect the bottom to be the most important, but in this case, it's actually the top here. You can see that it is waiting, it is stuck inside the wait PID function uh, inside of the initialization, actually the termination of multiprocessing pool. So it's waiting for a process to die and it has not died yet. And so that's kind of where it gets stuck. Um, and so you can, you can poke around and see like, okay, here's here's the Python stack trace. You can also navigate the Python frames by using pi up and pi down. Uh, so if we did pi up, uh, we are now, uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, we're, we're at this line here. So this is the line of Python code. This is the line of C code. Um, and you can you know poke around in here and figure out what things are supposed to happen here and maybe figure out the solution to your problem i actually don't know the solution to this problem because it's a little bit a little bit above my head um but let's get to a useful frame where we can actually see something s oh we are uh in our main function here pi down uh pi locals pi, pi locals is that what it is yeah, so it'll tell you all of the local variables. You can see that we have a pool, a process pool, uh, that it's trying to open stuff. And I don't know, you can poke around there. But there's a whole bunch of Py commands that get added to GDB, which lets you uh, do some additional, you know, debugging inside of inside of a stuck process. So we're actually we're actually attaching to this broken process over here that um, allows us to debug further. But anyway, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, this definitely helped me figure out some some more stuff in this situation and maybe you'll be able to use this to find your bugs in production anyway uh if you have additional things you would like me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms but thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one